Hey, hi Shiva. So explain about yourself. I am Shashinkar. I completed my Bachelor of Technology with Computer Science Engineering in 2023. Uh, I also I also interned for the EPAM system as a junior software engineer. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, I am interested in the Java full stack development so that I learned the Java full stack skills like servlets, J2W technology and core Java J2SC. Okay, so what is the application you completed in your course mm -hmm. time? So I developed the web application with the MVC architecture following. What is your application name? Uh, com employee management system. Okay. So, what which architecture you used in your application? I use the MVC architecture. Model Can you view. explain about mod, uh, MVC architecture? Yes, sir. So, yes. model view control architecture represents the three different types of layers mm -hmm. where control is responsible for taking the request and processing the request. Whenever a request is coming to the web application, every request is mapping to uh, map it through the controller. Mm -hmm. And controller is uh, giving to the uh, service layer and the data access layer. Okay. So service layer consists of business logics. So whenever controller maps the uh, with the help of the URL mapping based on the URL request, mm -hmm. so it goes to the corresponding serv uh, service and service for process the request by connecting to the repository layer. Mm -hmm. uh, this repository. How we, you are connecting from controller layer to repository layer? Uh, so I follow the I use a JDBC API. Mm -hmm. So in that I uh, I can first I, I load the uh, driver. Okay. And second uh, with the help of the class dot name, which is a Java reflection API. Okay. Through this. So uh, when I am using class dot name, do you see any exceptions? Yes, sir. I found the class not found exception. Okay. Since the, uh, I use the class dot name with a string parameter. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, there is a possibility of the okay. so it may raise the class not found exception since okay. it, so they are, they make it as a compile time exception mm -hmm. so my I must handle with the help of the try catch for okay. the compile time exceptions okay so I use the try okay, catch. What are the remaining steps? Can you explain? driver manager get connection okay so this is a static class which is, uh, it will instantiate the driver corresponding driver. Is it a static class or uh, you are calling Sorry. the static method? I am calling the static method of the okay. driver manager class. Mm -hmm. So which is responsible for uh, by instantiating the driver which is loaded with mm -hmm. the help of the reflection API. Okay. So it gives the um, connection object to the with the help of the connection so interface can I can me, hold it. So. Oh, can you tell me connection is an interface or class? Connection is an interface. Okay. So, so what is the method inside that? Uh, Inside that, uh, to create the different kinds of statements, mm -hmm. so we have the prepare statement. Uh, what is the difference between statement and prepare statement? Statement is a uh, not a compiled version. So mm -hmm. every time we we use a statement, uh, I can possibility of SQL injection attack. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can uh, I can go for the prepare statement, which consists of placeholders, mm -hmm. so that SQL injection is not possible. Okay. So I can go. Statement whenever there is no dynamically getting the data, it's okay. uh, collecting the uh, select star statement, mm -hmm. go for the statement. Okay. Uh, if I want to specifically where condition based on the parameter, go for the prepare statement. Okay. Whenever, uh, whenever I want to go for the transaction base, go for the callable statement. Okay. So create yes. these kind of objects. Mm -hmm. I require uh, on the connection uh, object, we have the prepare statement, prepare statement method, prepare statement method. Prepare statement method, okay. Uh, with a uh, string parameter so that the compile version is possible okay okay right so you mentioned some exception like class not found exception is it a checked exception or unchecked exception it is a checked exception so what is the difference between checked exception versus unchecked exception checked exceptions are used for the at the time of development it should not allow to run the program okay. so compiler must satisfy uh, in compared to the checked exceptions mm -hmm. what are the exceptions you faced in your application development so I in when I'm connecting to the database, I will get the class not found exception for loading. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'm executing statements, I will get the SQL exception. Mm -hmm. What else checked exceptions you faced? And what are the checked exceptions I, in general? IO exception. Okay. Uh, Interrupt exception when uh, connecting with the uh, threads mm -hmm. in uh, in the process of thread uh, interthread communication. Okay. What is meant by interthread communication? Interthread communication. Whenever I am going for the multi-threading environment, mm. so there is a shared variable, a shared mm. resources between the threads. So whenever one thread is accessing the shared resources, other thread has to wait for the shared resources. Okay. If they don't wait and they are ready to accessing both. If mm. I allow, so I will get the data inconsistency mm. and will get the undesired data behavior. Data inconsistency means what about synchronization? So, so because to maintain the data consistency, I should synchronize them. Mm -hmm. So by by maintaining the lockings. So every object is associated a lock. So I can utilize the object as a lock. You mentioned lock. Then what is deadlock? Deadlocks. 
deadlocks comes whenever whenever multiple threads are accessing the resources mm. when one thread is accessing a particular resource okay uh, and other thread is also uh, trying to uh, get the resource okay. to acquire mm. so uh, first thread is unable to execute the task and second thread is also ready to uh, acquire the task uh, lock so mm. uh, both unable to execute it so both are going to dead state okay this situation is said to be deadlock okay so for achieving synchronization what are the methods you used uh, i use the wait and notify sir okay these then are wait and notify in which class uh, wait and notify basically in during synchronization we have the part of the object class okay why object class you are working with multi threading why not in thread class those methods okay, are okay. Okay. So, so whenever i we have shared variable so these are be accessed by the multiple threads hmm. so however it is controlled with the synchronization i i acquired a lock so these are part of the object itself nothing but a resource so resource knows what are the threads which are waiting for the particular particular resource but thread doesn't know the other thread is acquiring particular resource so okay. it's so java made that uh, go for the object itself so that object knows other threads is trying to want the shared resource so okay. that's why they kept in the object itself okay so because one thread is doesn't know the other thread which what is the resource he was expecting okay so you you completed only one application uh, do you have any idea about a spring spring boot application yes, i also developed a student system mm -hmm. on the spring of spring mm -hmm. so i implemented the web uh, same mbc architecture mm -hmm. but in terms of loose coupling i want the loose coupling feature okay and i also reduce the jdbc problems so what do you face the difficulties when you are come when you are working with j2e application and you are working with a uh, uh, spring application right? yes sir so what what do you felt the difference between j2e application versus spring application yes firstly i choose different kinds of projects sir. one is dynamic project for the servlets whereas second one is i use the maven project for building mm -hmm. and uh, all the configurations are uh, it is easy for the spring framework what is maven maven is a build tool for uh, any kind of jars i needed in the before technology i need to Specific, uh, explicitly, I have to download it, and I have to manage them. But whereas coming to the Maven is a build tool, it manages the dependencies with the help of the um, both local repository and the uh, remote repository. There okay. is a uh, remote repository called MVN repository. Hmm. So it consists of all the jar files which is needed. Whenever I ask for the particular kind of dependency, uh, this Maven build tool knows that. Uh, based on the artifact id which is mentioned as part of the pom.xml what is the difference between artifact id versus group id so artifact id is a project name group id is a uh, domain name sir okay so whenever i followed uh, write any code i should follow the domain followed by project name okay uh, what is the abbreviation of pom project object model okay good so which version of spring you used so i use a 3.4 sir is it spring boot or spring spring sir spring 3 so what is the difference between spring versus spring boot so when i develop the spring application i faced the xml based configuration which mm. is very difficult to communicate the configuration details to the application mm -hmm. if it Where, is difficult then why you don't choose j2e j2e you are not doing much configurations right yes sir then so j2e uh, why i went to the spring framework is first firstly dependency injection mm. so which makes a loose coupling which helps for the unit testing easily okay, good okay then and also explicitly i have to download the jar files mm. and i can also go for the spring with mm. the maven mm. and also every boilerplate is already gives a different kinds of templates for the different kinds of projects for web okay. for web we have the web module mm. through which i can simply implement the mvc architecture okay i can and also a uh, lot of boilerplate code will be reduced with the help of spring framework very good so then comes to spring boot then why spring boot So uh, I have the before I use the XML based configuration. So whenever something is uh, issue, the application will not run, and it is also difficult to uh, rectify the issues. So instead of going for the uh, configuration based approach, go for the convention based approach, which is Java based annotation. Hmm. I uh, so Spring Boot uses the Java based annotations so that uh, it is easy to understand and also it makes the configurations easily so developer should not worry about the dependencies management and the configurations so what are the annotations used then in spring boot we have the adderet spring uh, spring boot application which is a combination of the adderet enable adderet enable auto configuration adderet configuration adderet component scan hmm. so uh, adderet configuration is used to whenever you want to specify the any kind of bin definitions uh, inside a same class 
I can specify uh, that class with a annotation called the configuration. Okay. So we uh, whenever we have we want the look up for the what are the components we needed for the creating the beans, go for the edited component scan. So it look for the corresponding package. What is the root package so that I can look up for the components to create the beans. Okay. Can you tell me edited bean annotation? Can I use for a class? At the date bean for the class. No, sir. It is specific to the methods. Okay. So why we need to keep for a method? At the bean. So, so I use the methods specific. How the bean, Spring Boot knows the how to keep, uh, to create the beans, but doesn't know how to create it. Whether mm -hmm. we can choose a constructor base, a setter base, mm -hmm. and uh, what parameters I should pass. Mm -hmm. So all these are uh, developer has to maintain. Okay. So that's why uh, we can utilize the methods. So I can decorate with the dreaded bean so that Spring knows that it is a bean definitions. You can utilize these definition by creating the bean. Okay. So what is the difference between setter injection and constructor injection? So constructor injection and uh, setter injections are the implementations of the dependency injection. It is one of the design pattern. What are the design patterns you know? Uh, I know the singleton design pattern. Explain about it. Singleton design pattern is uh, it is a solution. Uh, whenever I want to create the object only one time, I should not allow to create the object any number of times. So I can go for singleton design pattern to create the singleton type of objects. So I, I should make the class as a final. Mm -hmm. So that this class cannot be inherit. Okay. And also make the constructor as a private. What is constructor? Constructor is a it is special kind of uh, function. Mm -hmm. uh, it is having same name of uh, class name. Okay. What are the different types of constructors? So we have the default constructor, no org constructor, and parameterized constructor. So what is the difference between default constructor versus no org constructor? If you have already a default constructor, then why should I go for no org constructor? As yes, a default constructor is given by the compiler. Mm -hmm. If there is no constructor, is explicitly developer is didn't write. Mm -hmm. But whenever no org constructor is a without no without parameters. So whenever I want to do any kind of operations during creation and initializations, go for the no uh, no org constructor instead of Mm -hmm. uh, compiler is giving so okay. it does, doesn't contain any kind of implementations there mm -hmm. okay what about constructor chaining constructor chaining so whenever we have the inheritance so when uh, during creation of the object for the child it implicitly creates the object of the parent so the first statement of the constructor is a super so super it, it is calling the super constructor which is a parent constructor why should i go for constructor chaining constructor chaining sir so uh, whenever I want to uh, see the uh, properties or behaviors of the parent, so I need a parent object also. Okay. Uh, implicitly, the child object uh, knows the properties with the help of parent object only. Okay. So every constructor first statement is uh, super, super constructor calling. Okay. So that's why. What is copy constructor? Copy constructor is used to for cloning purpose. Cloning. Okay. What is clone? Uh, whenever I have the object, I want to uh, instead of create uh, creating and initialize same set of properties and data of a particular object, go for the cloning so that uh, whatever the details uh, states it have the object, we can uh, we can get for my so own object. I have an object, for example. So I created an employee e equals to new employee. So if I want to copy, so you have an object class. There is a method name called clone. So if I am going to do e dot clone, is it be going to clone? So uh, we should go for the marker interface. Before mm -hmm. uh, what is cloning. marker interface? So marker interface uh, is a kind of interface does not have any kind of methods. Mm -hmm. So during runtime, uh, my Java gives the behavior to the whenever I make the marker interface, it allows to clone. Okay. Otherwise, it will throw the exception. What is the exception then? Clonable exception. Clone not supported exception. Clone. Okay, good. So what about that uh, object class contains some other methods, right? So yes. can you explain about some other methods in object class? Object class. Every object has a two string method, wait, notify method, wait having the other kind of overload methods, mm -hmm. notify, notify all, two uh, hash code, uh, get class name. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about this two string method? Why we need two string method? So whenever logging or uh, printing the statement, so to know the details of an object, uh, we can implement the two string. What are the things I want to show? Mm -hmm. So by so implementing the two string, a, did you use two string anyway? Yes, sir. And in, <coughs> in encapsulated class, I used the two string. Okay, encapsulated class. Okay. Hmm. So what that is I encapsulation? Encapsulation is a one of the uh, OOPs principle. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually consists of the both uh, the variables and behaviors. Mm -hmm. So it will wrap onto the single unit called object, so that mm -hmm. outside the world doesn't know the what uh, its data 
okay so with the help of this giving the security uh, we can also restrict with the help of the access modifiers hmm. what are the access modifiers do you know uh, we, i use a uh, primarily private public uh, i didn't use a protected sir okay Def we what also is the difference between default and protected default and protected you didn't use protected no okay then what is the uh, if you want to create a servlet what is the servlet you created uh, for creating your own servlet you created your own servlet right you yes, mentioned sir, by extending the http servlet http servlet in http servlet what are the methods you used uh, i use the uh, get hmm? do get do post do, i said do so get so what are the do get do post methods? are the protected methods then you didn't use your protected methods okay so you used protect methods but you are not aware of it you need to be take care of it okay so but good so good uh, so explain about uh, method overloading versus method overriding method overloading and method overriding are part of the polymorphism principle mm. which is actually implementation for this principle to follow mm. the rules mm. in the method signature if we do, there is a difference in the parameter difference mm. uh, it is a method overloading in okay. the difference may be same method name but differ in the number of parameters or parameter types it is okay. called as a uh, method overloading Hmm. Uh, we have the what same are the rules we need to follow for method overriding in the method signature same method name and uh, you should not worry about the return type and the, in the different behaviors is uh, either the parameter list or parameter may be types or number of arguments okay and that's all hmm. for okay. method overriding it is a runtime polymorphism hmm. so java runtime jvm will uh, bind the behavior to the particular calling statement mm. during runtime so that's why you call it as a runtime polymorphism mm. so how to create your own exception how to create the own exception by extending the exception class or by extending the superclass throwable superclass throwable throwable also we can create the exception mm -hmm. but both these are the checked exceptions Hmm. Uh, to create the runtime exception we should go for the runtime exception class which is a subclass of the exception okay what is the difference between throw versus throw throw is to create the user defined kind of exceptions whenever particular kind of condition is not reached so we can give the information to the by stopping at that at the the time of the metric is failed i can raise exception any kind of statement below that it should uh, it should not be executed hmm. and i can also uh, give the information details about the why, why it is occurred okay. i can also log it okay and throws is used for the checked exceptions or any if i didn't uh, handle the at the doing that method and i want to uh, handle in the calling methods uh, you should declare the method help of throws so that calling method can handle it okay good there so, is no need to mention the Uh, runtime exceptions in the throws keyword okay if, but if, they, uh, if there is any checked exception it must be either uh, try catch should be added otherwise we should mention with the throws keywords okay so you work on collections by nations yes sir so what are the collections you work on in uh, your application uh, i work on the array list mm -hmm. and also a map sir map okay what is the difference between array list and linked list you have a two options right then why you choose the array list instead of linked list so array list is mainly used for the getting the data and uh, there is no any kind of frequent modifications mm -hmm. just to display in the on the front side okay go for the array list for the accessing purpose only okay because it is Why? following the sequential uh, it is a following the contiguous memory okay so you can access the randomly since array list implements the random 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 access interface what is random access interface random access interface it is a marker interface mm. so which tells that it is implementing the sequential access so vector is also implementing random access then why should i go for array list only because of the uh, it is uh, vector is a synchronized word and, and also thread safe mm. so it causes the performance low because mm. of the thread safe so if you don't want the multi thread environment go for the array list sir. what is the difference between fail fast and fail safe fail fast and fail safe this both are the mechanisms which is used for the concurrent modification mm -hmm. and uh, apart from the vector and stack uh, in the collection framework all others are fail fast mechanisms mm -hmm. so whenever the whenever iterating through the any kind of collection if you try to write or modify it we will get the concurrent exception concurrent modification exception mm -hmm. so it is not allowed to write anything anything whenever i'm iterating mm -hmm. so go for the uh, any concurrent allowing exception uh, so the replaceable for the array list is copy and write array list okay so which one is fail fast and which one is fail safe fail fast is not allowing modification whenever iterating mm -hmm. fail safe is allowing to whenever iterating sir okay. to modify great great job so good luck